Now let's talk a little bit about the calibration process and where things can go wrong there. Uh, what are the measurement parameters, the functions, uh, ranges of the instrument you're submitting for calibration? Uh, does it have multiple ranges, multiple readings, or is it a single-use instrument? And then you have to get into the accuracy of those ranges or values or the, uh, of the instrument to determine what you think the tolerances should be for acceptance. This is what you or someone in your organization should have based a decision on when you selected it uh, for the suitability for intended purpose category. You base that likely on what the manufacturer stated it will meet. Sometimes you'll change that to what your tolerances uh, are required to meet for your production process. And then you've got to look at the lab that you're sending it to, whether it's an internal lab or an external commercial lab. Are they capable of measuring in those parameters or those functions or ranges or values? How does their measurement uncertainty compare to the tolerances or the accuracy that we talked about uh, above of the instrument? Will they be able, will that lab be able to provide valid results that are meaningful to you? If their uncertainties are as large as the tolerances of the instrument, is there any value to that? Certainly their un uncertainties need to be significantly smaller. And what test points will they check on your instrument? Uh, we've seen examples where a calibration for, let's say, a uh, temperature indicating device that had two channels and four different thermocouple types on each channel uh, was only checked on one channel and two thermocouple types, yet the instrument in the production process was used on both channels and three out of the four thermocouples. There's no traceability for the channel that wasn't checked or for the other thermocouple types that were not checked. And therefore, they have no control over their measurement process. They have no indication whether that meets or does not meet the tolerances of the instrument. And that's the basis of their, their use of the instrument in their process. So it's not capable of producing valid results if it's not being checked. So getting down to the tolerances that are applied uh, in the calibration of your instrument, are those the same as the ones stated by the OEM? Or if you decided to change those tolerances for your purposes, does your calibration provider know that? And did they apply that to your calibration? Changing those tolerance limits changes whether or not you're notified that it's in or out of tolerance, in or out of the correct tolerances. And if you're not being notified when you should be, because those tolerances are different, then you're missing evaluations on whether there was an impact to your product. The reverse is also true. If those tolerances are tighter, you're being told to perform a nonconformance review when you probably don't need to and you're wasting resources. So it's very important that you ensure that those tolerances are correct, not just looking for out-of-tolerance conditions, but especially initially when uh, sending an instrument to a calibration provider, First time you get that back, check those tolerance limits, make sure it's what you expected it to be. Another thought process for the calibration um, of your instrument is whether the technician is competent to perform the calibration. How do you know whether they're competent or not? And this is really part of um, what 17025 brings to the table. And then in the end, is the calibration report that you receive easy to understand or is it difficult to read? Does it give you the information clearly? Um, or is it something that you're searching for the right information and not really quite sure how to read it? So let's talk about the end result. Assuming that the calibration is performed correctly, the tolerances are right, all the test points are there that you need, a uh, good technician performing the calibration, competent for the measurements. Now you get to evaluating uh, the, the out-of-tolerance results and performing a non-conformance review. Whether or not your quality system mandates that you do this, doing so can help prevent safety issues, can save you money, costs, uh, can prevent negative marketing of your product. Uh, if you're getting bad results, 
the evaluation is often under executed from my perspective and my experience, uh, resulting in a false perception that there's no impact to the product. If these NCR reviews are not thorough enough or not checking the right, uh, making the right comparisons of the outer tolerance data to your decisions, or not capturing all of the areas where the instrument was being used, that's often a problem, then you're effectively breaking the traceability chain or breaking the uh, measurement assurance process for your product. And again, the whole purpose of spending the money and selecting the right instrument and getting it calibrated and getting the results is so you can evaluate that everything was good. And if it wasn't good, you can mitigate that risk. We offer consulting in this area to help your engineers and quality personnel understand how to get better value out of those impact evaluations, those NCR evaluations. One uh, general question to ask yourself is how many of these evaluations have you had in the past five years and of those, how many had a negative impact on your product? If it's near zero or it is zero, what's the probability of that? Does that seem right? What's your gut feel? Is there possibly something not being done correctly in your NCR review? And maybe you should dig into that. If it seems too good to be true, you might consider uh, the quality of the evaluations being performed. And if you don't do it, an external auditor might. And they may not see it the way you do, saying that you are error free. They may say, you know, you've had an awful lot of these evaluations and you've either got a very good quality system in place to prevent any impact to the product or something's not right about the process. So then you get down to the risk, risk mitigation and that is when you've determined that there's an impact to the product, what do you do with that information? How do you make sure that you fix the problem in your process? Make sure that that instrument is either changed out if you have a reliability issue with it, uh, so you don't have those impact studies that you have to do that cost you money. Or um, more directly, whether that out of tolerance data uh, had an impact on your product being called good or bad in the past calibration interval. If it caused you to reject good product, it's in your best interest to determine how much it cost you in scrap rework, uh, scrap product rework, or the NCR evaluation costs. If you ended up, uh, as a result of the outer tolerance, accepting bad product, it's in your best interest to chase that down as well because accepting bad product and putting it out for your consumers to use can cause a perception that there's a problem with it, a faulty product. You could end up with liability suits that are related to this. You can have property damage, medical costs, fatalities. Hopefully you're not to that extreme, but uh, you certainly may have some costs out there that are unnecessary. So you want to get to the root problem and reduce or prevent these from recurring. In the end, your business is not just about guidelines and having to meet requirements. It's about making a safe and reliable and superior product that fills a need in the market and becoming profitable at doing so. Having errors in your measurement process can cost you money and reduce your profitability. Your measurement assurance program should be designed to help you minimize the risks in your processes and your decisions about the product, about its safety, about its quality. Too often, one or more of these categories that I've mentioned are not fully implemented. And that, again, causes the reliability of your measurement assurance program to lose value, to become effect ineffective or for you to waste money on something that's not being implemented fully. If you're going to put the effort and the money into some parts of this, why wouldn't you put it into all of it? Make sure that it doesn't impact your cost. Make sure it doesn't impact your profitability. Make your measurement assurance program robust so that it keeps you away from the costs or from negative safety issues. 